put the flowers in a vase, and she placed them on the table as if nothing had happened to them. But look what happened to them. Everyone gathered around the table. Dr. Graves rubbed his hands together enthusiastically. Tonight's menu is, Mrs. Graves uncovered each serving dish, great New Zealand land vipers with capers and clotted cream, pureed lamp fish fins with bee's knees and guppy fillets, parasitic lamprey spines with spotted eel and tamarillo aspic from Madagascar. Boiled, blistered, variegated turnip root from right here. And Indonesian snarling knishes au oh, gratin. Garnished with octopus knuckles from Tibet. How do you think that looks? Well, you know. It's... Oh. Why do you keep doing that? I'm showing you. Not me. You are. I'm showing you. I'm showing you. Then, that's when Seth and Sarah noticed Phoebe. She had grown even bigger since that afternoon. And beetle leg jello with fly carcass for Phoebe, Mrs. Graves said, as the giant fly trap flailed its arms and devoured its dinner, plates and all. Everyone sat eating their supper with relish and glee. All but Seth and Sarah, they just sat and stared at their plates. Their food was moving. Oh, dear me, Mrs. Graves said as her eyes filled with tears. You don't like it. Poor Hieronymus. Just when you finally made some friends, I've spoiled everything. Oh, Mrs. Graves, please don't cry, Sarah begged. It's just that this food is a little unusual for us. That's all. The food was still moving. We've moved from town to town, always at night, always hoping to make a fresh start, Dr. Graves said sadly. But something always seems to happen. You're different, Seth said but we like that you're different. My mother even sent along this invitation for the garden club tea. Mrs. Graves eagerly opened it and her eyes widened and she shrieked with joy. The Union City Ladies Auxiliary Garden Club cordially invites you to attend a tea on Saturday at the home of Mrs. Apassionata Trenchmouth. Trenchmouth. She sang out as she danced around the room. Bring a, plate to sh a plant to share. Oh my dears, maybe at long last we'll fit in. After all, Sarah thought, what could happen at the Union City Ladies Garden Club Tea? Mm. Mm. Uh, uh. On Saturday, Mrs. Miller and Mrs. Graves arrived for the tea on time. Mrs. Graves had put on her best outfit for the occasion, brought along one of Phoebe's babies in a covered carrier. Oh boy. Look, it's like boink, boink, boink. Her heart was full of happiness. She and Mrs. Miller had had two cups of tea and had heard about Mrs. Saspia, Saspilla's black-eyed Susans, Miss Delilah's giant delphiniums, Mary Pigeon Pie's double petunias, when Doretta Dove Tonsil trotted through the front door out of breath. Guess who's coming to judge the fall home show this year? Who? the collective women gasped. Christopher Jewell! She trumpeted and collapsed in a swoon. Christopher Joel had the most popular television show on home decorating of all time. Broadcast all the way from Hollywood, he was bringing a photographer from the lady's lovely home companion. Doretta Dove Tonsil went on, and there will be a cash prize for the best decorated house of the year. With a lift of an eyebrow, a subtle shift of gaze, every lady in the room was filling herself with the murderous resolve to be the one whose house would be picked by Christopher Joel when there was a piercing scream. Ah! Piss... Mrs. Piss... Mrs. Piss... Pissasperoy. There it is. Mrs. Pissasperoy's hybrid rose tree, a grand champion at the state flower show, had wilted. Mrs. Dove Tonsil's tea roses were dead as doornails. Mrs. Trenchmouth was holding her limp and withered orchids. Mrs. Graves had slipped away and was moving through the garden. As she did, each plant and shrub she paused by, dried, withered, and died. Oh. 
tiny little goofball? I'm never really very clear about that. I mean, she seems like a nice person. It's her, the lady screamed as they surrounded Mrs. Graves. The small Venus flytrap had an untimely growth spurt and burst out of its carrier. It grabbed vor voraciously at lemon squares, the tea set, the Persian rugs. It devoured everything that was not sitting down, and then it lurched at the Union City Garden Club members' hats and ate every one. <laughs> Mrs. Graves made a hasty retreat. One more disaster, she muttered, will never fit in. From that moment on, the happenings were referred to by the ladies in the Union City Garden Club as the Great Flytrap Affair. Despite the unpleasantness and scandal at the Union City Garden Club tea, the Union City was in full swing making preparations for the fall home show and the arrival of Christopher George. Joel, Christopher Joel, sorry. Everyone was vying for the coveted honor of having the best decorated house of the year. Seth, Sarah, and Ronnie tried to cheer her up, tried to cheer up Mrs. Graves. She was inconsolable. Poor mother, Ronnie said to his father, what can we do to help? Mmm, said father, perhaps if we do something for the town, the people will forget the garden tea incident. Something so significant, we would be accepted here in Union City. Yes, we've got to come up with something, Ronnie said. All of them thought and thought, and finally Seth sprang out of his chair. I know! Haven't you all noticed how many old geezers in this town are bald? Everyone nodded yes. Well, would they do just about anything to have hair again? Of course, Sarah exploded. Doctor craves your secret formula. Father, you're right. Think of what you could do for all those Union City men, Ronnie said. Dr. Graves rose and paced the floor. The formula hasn't been the formula hasn't been fully tested yet. But it has successfully grown hair on just about anything. Dr. Graves, you have to do it for Mrs. Graves, Seth said urgently. By Jove, I do believe you're right. For Mrs. Graves. Let's get away to the laboratory. Let's away to the laboratory. He shouted as he made for the basement door. The children, oh my, look at that. The children helped Dr. Graves mix up a fresh batch of his magic hair growing formula and they filled 37 small but important bottles and took them to town three days before the annual fall home show. Then they gave them out on the corner of Maine and Coldwater to Mayor Trenchmouth, Mr. Pisasperoy, Pisasperoy, Pisasperoy. Oh. This was Mr. Dovetail, most of the town council, anyone whose paint was poking through. Well, sir, Dr. Graves' formula was a complete success. The results were better than hoped for. Every bald man in town was asking for a bottle of Dr. Graves' famous hair-raising elixir. The villagers forgot the great flytrap affair. Even Mrs. Graves was held in good stead once again. And it put everyone in the best mood for the fall home show. As the show grew closer, the air was positively electric with dreams of winning the coveted Best Decorated House Award and being featured in the lady's lovely home companion. Ah, itchy nose. Oh, there he is. Finally, the big day arrived. And so did Christopher Joel. All the way from Hollywood. Every home in town had manicured lawns, flower displays on their porches next to old rockers, antique wheelbarrows, and such. Mayor Trenchmouth and the town council accompanied Mr. Joel to each and every house. But Mr. Joel made comments that never exceeded, oh, very nice, very nice. And then he yawned. Oh. Then it was at Mrs. Dove Consul's house that Mayor Trenchmouth got a strange look on his face twitched. His eyes widened. And then he dropped to all fours, sharpened his nails on the doormat. All of a sudden, a leaf blown by in the wind caught his eye, and he raced after it, pouncing on it over and over again. Then he stopped and scratched his ear with his left leg. Uh -oh. At that moment, all the men in the town council and men's club, formerly bald to a man, but now full toffed. 
They all fell on their hands and knees as well. One of them kissed it out of them. <laughs> Mr. Pisasperoy stalked a bird in a tree next to the house. Then he froze and made a chattering sound with his mouth as he watched the bird. Mr. Pitkimple darted under a porch carpet and batted at the ankles of his wife, who stood helplessly watching. Then Mr. Vephansel himself seized a scarecrow off a porch rocker and lying on his back, rabbit kicked it while he held it between his teeth and arms. Three men in the town council, a usually silent three, had treed themselves and were meowing and howling in chorus. The fire brigade had to be called to get them out of the tree. Even the bank president, Mr. Greenbill, crouched next to a mouse hole and refused to leave it. Ronnie, Seth whispered, there must be something in that hair stuff that makes them act this way. Yes, they all shouted, and three of them had scampered home. Oh, boy. They arrived at the Graves house completely out of breath. We have a disaster, they said breathlessly. I should say we have, Dr. Graves said, as he and Mrs. Graves tried to stop a flow of viscous blue goo that was oozing from the kitchen. I gave my new soap formula a little too much enthusiastic. It was a little too enthusiastic for the dishwasher. No, Father. We're talking about the mayor and the men in the council. All the bald men that used your formula are crawling around acting like house cats. An angry mob is headed this way, Seth announced. We're ruined, Mrs. Graves way old as she held her head. That exact moment, the front door opened and a wall of screaming, angry wives flowed in. They met with a whirling cloud of bats. As the ladies rushed the house, they landed in the living room and slipped on the nasty blue formula which held them fast. They could hardly move. The giant spiders inched all over them as they screamed in terror. Then something in a very large pot in the kitchen pushed off the lid and crawled towards them. It was Phoebe. Who, was, who then pulled herself into the room and managed to kiss each person in the room with all of her mouths. <coughs> Mrs. Trenchmouth fainted. Mrs. Pisasperoy had an attack of the vapors. She was such an affectionate flytrap. Mrs. Why are vapors? Vapors are when you're like, oh. It's sort of like fainting. She's such an affectionate flytrap, Mrs. Graves cooed. What kind of a madhouse is this? The angry mob screamed, at which Mrs. Graves began to sob uncontrollably. But then, guess who shows up? Showing her. Are you going to see too? I'll tell you what kind of a madhouse this is, Christopher Joel roared as he pushed his way through the crowd outside. It's the most perfect haunted house I've ever seen. I love this. I love it. He cried, and he went from room to room. You mean you like this, Mrs. Graves said in total disbelief. Like it? I adore it, Mr. Joel said as he slid around the rooms in a blue, gloppy mess. I have never seen such terrifying decor, ever. Green. Right. Wonder one thing. Set what? What I'm reading for her right now. I'm going to finish this. Seth and Sarah and the Graves ate. Hey, and the Graves family beamed. The townsfolk gave each other looks. Take lots of pictures. This is not only going to be our lead article, but our cover story, the publisher of the ladies' lovely home companion called out. I'm going to have you all on my show, Mr. Joel sang out as he petted a giant spider. Needless to say, the Graves house won the fall home show. As for the mayor and the town council, they were hospitalized and treated for fleas. The effects... This is his new hairstyle. All right. The fleas, hold on, the effects of the hair formula wore off and as did their full heads of hair. In the village, it had grown quite proud of the Graves family and their wonderful haunted house. When people asked about the Graves and their house on the hill, villagers would say, well, they fit in. They just fit in. That was a story for you, Libby Lee, along with Libby Lee here. And Mama and I love you. We're in Cuba right now. We're coming home soon. I can't wait to see you. Now what are we doing?